Hi everybody, welcome to Patchwork Challenge November update. Merry Christmas, I hope you've had a fabulous break over the winter. This is our penultimate um, pod of the year, well of Patchwork Challenge 2023, and we'll wrap up in January with a roundup of the year that's passed. Um, joining me tonight are Scott Reed, all the way from Silly, and even further away, well from me, is Vincent on Tessel. Hi Vincent. How are you Hi doing there. gents? Very well, yeah. thank you, James. Yeah, it's great to be uh, in. All right, well, really, really good to have you both. Uh, thank you for stepping up in light of a terrible showing from Mark, <coughs> Ryan and Pete, uh, who have all got their excuses in nice and early. Uh, Ryan may turn up, but he has a very small baby. Uh, the other two, nah, less likely. Um, so we're going to get stuck straight in. First thing I want to do is just uh, give you a quick outline of what we're going to talk about tonight. So I'll just bring up the slideshow. Right, I'll probably cut a little bit there. <laughs> right, so as I said, we're just going to run through uh, what we've got going on this evening. Um, first of all, we're going to touch on the best birds of November. Then for some reason, we've got Scott following that up. And then there's going to be some more best birds. And then we're going to get stuck into the mini leagues. Then we're going to uh, have a chat with Vincent. Now, uh, Vincent is joining the admin team. And you'll see there we've got Dutch PwC. And this is because uh, Vincent has driven a massive expansion with uh, Morris and Rob and a few of the other guys in the Netherlands uh, to actually launch a full Dutch version of the competition. So that's going to run alongside the uh, British Patchwork Challenge 2024. So we'll, we'll have a chat to Vincent about that then and also about his patch. Then we'll get into some more mini leagues, we'll have a look at the patch gold, uh, wind it up with the final set of mini leagues, some top tens, and then we'll have a look at um, predictions for the first good bird for January and what the best birds of 2023 have been. I mean, there's been loads, so uh, we'll get into that. But uh, without further ado, um, let's get cracking. You don't want to listen to me talk too much. So best birds of November. And really, there's only one best bird of November. I know we've got uh, Steve's pallid swift there, but, you know, Cape May warbler. What a bird. Mm, Scott, yeah. t tell <laughs> us about it. What what happened? What, how how did that happen? Um. I'd been wanting to get out and do a bit of birding for a couple of weeks and I, I just hadn't had the chance. I'd, um, so I, I normally book a couple of weeks off in uh, October and I, just because of somebody else at work being on leave, I hadn't managed to get my usual amount of time that I'd liked. So I'd planned to have that last week of October off and I uh, one thing led to another at work and it never happened. So uh, I was kind of, I was craving a day out birding and it was the, Friday the 10th of November I'd kind of at the beginning of the week I'd um sort of earmarked that day right and get all my work done through the uh through the week I'll, I'll have that day out and um nobody had been to Briar since the Friday before Bob Flood had been over there the Friday before and he'd found he'd had wax wings he'd found um, a dusky warbler uh, he'd had a decent day on there and uh, nobody else had been since, so I thought, you know, a, a, a week with nobody birding, one of the, probably the best one, my favourite island on on Scilly. And uh, in the in in that week, we'd had two big hits from the west, two really good westerly, fast moving um, systems from a really good location, so I'm sort of mid eastern seaboard. And uh, I just thought the potential was through the roof. And I went out with Will Scott on the Tuesday, and I was just I was hyping up the the chances of something good on Briar um on, on the friday um and anyway uh, so jumped on the jet boat and it was 50 mile an hour winds and huge swell going over there and uh, i'd only been there 20 minutes and i was just working down the sheltered side of the island and this little sheltered field just bordered by pittosporum um just caught my attention and it's not far from where bob had had the dusky warbler so i thought oh you know i'll probably not find anything here but best case scenario i might pish out the dusky warbler or something and uh and yeah so I, I stood there pishing for a little bit and i just became aware of this little grayish bird hopping out of the shadows and i just thought it was going to be a side chiff so uh, i was just oh, this will be nice nice cold side chiff put my bins up and straight away 
realized it wasn't a side chiff <laughs> and uh went into panic mode and uh, i just i looked uh, as soon as i saw it i thought right, this is a an american wood warbler species but it, you know i couldn't see that that sort of yellowy rump at first and i uh i just yeah my, my mind just went a bit blank and i just thought what is this it, nothing was jumping out at me as to, as to what it was and it disappeared at this point and as it flicked off i saw the yellow rump and i thought cry it could be it was was that a, a myrtle warbler just yeah, with yeah. that with that yellow rump and i thought cry that lightning striking twice you know uh, two november's in a row is surely not and um anyway long story short it eventually came back and uh and showed well and i noticed that little um the, the little yellowy sort of neck sides oh, like, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. as soon as i saw that and coupled with the the yellowy rump um the, the penny dropped quite quickly that it was a kate may warbler and uh Fantastic. i went into wow. absolute panic flappy adrenaline mode as, as as you do and um and yeah the rest was history as they say so yeah yeah special very special moment what a bird and you know what's this the fourth fifth third third, 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 third. for britain yeah yeah. yeah, and obviously just, there was and, one in Ireland um, earlier in the autumn. Yeah, lovely, lovely looking bird in Ireland. Um, and yeah, the last one was the one on Unst, which was yeah. 10 years ago, something like that. Is it as long uh, ago as that? God, yeah. blimey, time and the one, the one, be- Yeah, the one before that was uh, back, back in the 70s. It was a singing male in in somewhere in Scotland in, in yeah, the spring. Yeah, yeah, somewhere near Glasgow. Well, yeah. in that kind of area before someone shouts at me <laughs> so, yeah so yeah for first for first for silly first for england and uh yeah just uh, yeah just an absolute dream dream as a as a silly birder with you know american wood warblers on our radar um every autumn it was um yeah absolute dream fine oh what a bird to get under your belt and you've got some fantastic photos hopefully uh, you're going to have an opportunity to show us a few yeah, better ones in this back of the camera. I know. I, I, I was I was really annoyed in the end when I put that out because uh, I just it just it was the first sharp photo that yeah. I found on my camera and I took a picture of it. And then I looked back Some and slap yeah, it's, it's, in. It's, yeah, it's probably <laughs> wind blown head, and you can see those missing tertials that we spoke about earlier yeah. before the call. And um, yeah, so it was not not really doing it justice in that photo, but um, yeah, I've got I've got a few some bits that I'll Some shoot. of your later ones are absolutely lovely. I mean, it's it's a real cute bird, and they are they are fab. Um, I think that that Irish one slightly beats it in it terms does. of looks, I, I but I don't agree. suppose that takes it away from that bird <laughs> yeah. at all. That's a fantastic record, and you know, I don't suppose there's been an awful lot of Cape May's in the Western Powers late as November. That seems very, very late. I mean, whether it's dripped down or whether it's from this direct hit, like you say, from these fast moving depressions, either way, fantastic find. And obviously reward for going out and doing a different part, getting up, breaking away from the 3K patch, the proper patch, and actually looking at those wider horizons. So fantastic find. Very well done. Um, I've just quickly touch on steve's uh pallid swift a little bit better so uh steve has had a rotten autumn i know he was uh not very well for a part of it so it's really good to see him out and about and finding on westray and as he says in the uh tweet here makes up for the distance swift he couldn't nail last autumn during the pallid influx which obviously really likely to have been a pallid so really well done to steve now what we'll do here I'll just hand over to Scott. He's going to boot me off of sharing. So, okay. So yeah. So, yeah. So what um what I'll do is I'll just share a little um a little slideshow uh, to um to just show the patch. I've got a little some images of the um the the three K patch and then a few of the the wider ten K patch. And then a little um, little video that I'll share with a bit of a highlights rundown of uh, 2023 on uh, on silly again. Mostly mostly the 3K patch, but um, yeah. obviously with the seabird season that we had, it does touch quite strongly on the. Oh, uh, I thought you might might veer to those seabirds because yeah. you did all right. <laughs> we did okay. We did, yeah, it wasn't too bad. So um, right, let me let me get this up. So. For those of you that don't know the Isles of Scilly or haven't been before, this is uh, Hugh Town on St Mary's and this is where I live. 
and this little beach that you can see down in front of you is Porth Cressa, which is about 70 yards from my front door. So it, with the way that I bird Silly, um, I kind of consider the whole of Silly as a, not so much my patch, but I'm a, I just only really care about my Silly list these days and you know, I'm very much a, a Silly birder. So anything that, you know, I put my, like with the going to Briar for the Cape May Warbler, I put a lot of effort into the other islands as well as my uh, patch on St Mary's. But this Porth Cressa, Peninis Head, Garrison area, Garrison, you, uh, you can see over the far side there. This is almost a patch within a patch within a patch. This is my sort of little special little area around here. And uh, we'll move on there, you can see there, a nice view from Peninis looking back at Hugh Town and uh, that's a, a male lesser kestrel hanging in the wind. <laughs> uh, that was earlier this year, which I'll uh, touch on again in the in the highlights video. Fantastic. Uh, that's the view from the from where I took the, the, that photo of uh, of Hugh Town was. That's looking the other way. That's looking out into Porth Cressa Bay, uh, with St Agnes in the background. And this is one of my favourite sort of Vismig spots. Um, uh, so again, it's only a minute up from my house, but um, done really well up from there, up at Buzzer Hill, and picked up uh, ospreys and red kites and black kites and uh, absolutely all sorts over the last few years from there. So really good little vantage point. Excellent. And what, what sort of you get lots of passive movement over there into sort of towards St Agnes then in the autumn? Yeah, we do. It's um, Peninis is it can be in certain weather conditions a bit of a flyaway, especially with birds arriving. We get mm. big finch and thrush arrivals coming over uh, Peninis Head, and that that's Peninis that you can see there stretching out yeah. um, from uh, to the south um, from um, Porth Cressa Beach. Um, and it's uh, yeah, it, again, it's it's a very good vantage point for raptors but um again the purple heron glossy ibis or all, all, all bits like that over over town and over this area this year so it's uh yeah you, you never know what you're going to get over there fantastic again, variety. Just another yeah just a, another another view there of um of port Cressa from uh, during the low tide so is, is this the uh Isle of silly tourist board taking your yeah. photos here <laughs> no that's uh <laughs> Yeah, we uh, we also we we do run a a rock pool safari business here, so we've got lots of nice photos of Porth Cressa to uh, promote the business. But um, fantastic. Yeah, enough enough about that for now. Um, <laughs> on, on the other side of town, on the north side of town, we've got um, we've got the harbour here, Town Beach and St Mary's Harbour. Um, and again, it's uh, we don't maybe it's not quite as productive in there as Porth Cressa is, but again, it's uh, often often he uh, holds um, grebes and. Great Northern Divers, the, the Boxing Day Royal Turn a few years ago was in there. So again, loads of potential. Uh, and then on the far west side of St Mary's on, of my patch is um, is the garrison, which you see there. Now, I didn't take this photo, but um, I thought it was a nice aerial shot. You see the football pitch there. And just on the, the left-hand side of the image is all the garrison pines, which are an absolute migrant trap in spring and autumn. Any particular favourites in that in that area? That you've you found or seen third wise um yeah i mean not enough what have i found up there found found Rynek and hoopo and uh, what did i find in there this year found a marsh warbler in there this year and a, and a Rynek uh autolan bunting just just down from where this this next image is uh, a couple of years ago so um yeah it's not an uh, not an area that i do routinely um, cause, um chris webb uh spider or some of you may yeah. know him as He's uh, he he lives up on the garrison, so he covers that pretty well. So uh, oh, I will go up there for feeling like a bit of a change, but he he normally gets the uh, gets the spoils from the garrison. Beaten to the punch. Yeah, but and just a couple more images here of the sort of different habitats on the garrison. Some nice sort of grassy headlands looking out towards St Agnes. And then we get to Peninis Head on the other side, which um, is probably my favourite place on Scilly, if not my favourite place in the world. If uh, if you sort of gave me a spare couple of hours of my life uh, told me to go and spend it somewhere I'd probably always pick here. Nice views there over the couple of the farm fields looking towards down towards Old Town. It's Peninis Lighthouse. And right at the end of the, the headlands all these sort of gorgeous sort of granite rocky crags, rocky cliffs. And they can be quite good for migrants. We've had sort of fresh in red starts and robins and Various other bits clinging to these rocks, and uh, I'm adamant one day I'm going to find uh, find a wall creeper on one of these. That's the, uh, that's the like the geos of Shetland, but in mm, miniature. Yeah, <laughs> and it's also a good little sea watching spot. Um, it's where yeah. 
generally head up to on on sort of big southwesterly blows and um, most of the stuff you'd expect from there, the large shears and leeches, petrels and balearic shears and uh, all the skewers. Um, I'm still yet to see a Wilson's storm petrel from land uh, on Scilly. So um, I keep trying, but it's not happened yet. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a one day thing rather than something that's not going to happen, isn't it? Yeah, it'll happen at some point. <laughs> um, and also on the headlands, these gorgeous sort of heathery banks on the, the headlands uh, are hiding nice little surprises in there that's a manx sheer water burrow which we have quite a few nesting oh. attempts each year on um on st mary's but we have got quite a big rat problem on the island which um isn't going to change anytime soon there is a uh, they've obviously eradicated the rats of st agnes and uh, there's a project starting soon for for the rest of the islands apart from st mary's but it's, uh, it's a bit of a bigger bigger job so uh, maybe one day the uh, a few manx sheer water chicks do get away occasionally but most of them are norm normally fall yeah. prey to the rats and then we head inland a little bit and that's a, a nice sort of gives a bit of an indication there the sort of habitat that we're dealing with on on st mary's and you can understand why people say how hard it is to bird and how overgrown it's become when you look at that and you just think you know compared to your sort Where of uh, yeah you sort of you know sort of big sort of barren areas of, of a lot of the scottish isles which uh, you know you're going to generally find what's there um, it's a completely different story on St Mary's. So that's looking over over Lower Moors from the edge of Hugh Town, and then you get down into that habitat, and you've got a lot, a lot, a lot of reeds and a few pools. But then you've got these uh, these sallow clumps and these sort of wet um, sort of areas of willows, and uh, again, really productive for, for sort of warblers, you, you know, um, palaces warblers, yellow browds and black and white warblers in this area as well. Yeah. You know, over the years. You've got some nice uh, little little video there. Hopefully that's playing. Um, just giving a nice little hand view of some of the reedy areas at Lower Moors. Fantastic, yeah. And then the bit further east on St Mary's, we get towards Porthelic, which is again similar habitat, slightly larger, sort of your, your sort of wet and boggy lowland areas. Um, lots of iris fields, lots of reeds and sallow clumps. And we've got the famous Porthelic pool, um, which has been fairly productive this year it's not not been the, the water level is quite high at the moment and they have been all year so we've been lacking those muddy edges but um nonetheless we've had uh, peck sand there this year a wilson snipe um not the various other bits of cliff swallow over there Oops, skipped a couple there quite quickly but never mind and then um and then we get into uh down into holy vale here i don't know why that image isn't very good but um so that's just just north of port Alec, we've got holy vale which again quite a unique habitat on on st mary's these big tall sort of elm woodlands with a little narrow path going through them and, and it doesn't really do too well for rarities generally but we did have a red ivorio in there uh, this year and it's normally the the place to see and hear golden oriole on silly every spring um although this is the first spring that i've lived here that we we haven't had golden oriole singing in um in holy vale but hopefully they'll return oh, next uh, next may or june and then also on the interior of mapach is uh, a lot of these sort of sheltered um, flower fields arable fields that are bordered by pittosporum hedges and these are often a, a magnet for rarities and scarcities especially in in windy conditions mm. you've got all these uh you know, all these huge hedgerows and huge areas of elms and pittosporum sheltering these fields so uh yeah just uh, endless numbers of areas to check so what, what are you getting in those sort of areas lots of buntings lots of finches pipits that yeah sort of stuff. it depends on the crop a lot of the time um yeah. but but yeah little bunts reed bunts um little finch flocks can often pick up brambling in those areas um but uh, again it's you know Catharis thrushes, uh, even even just in the pit of sporum hedgerows, even though it's a yeah. you know a non-native species, it does attract stuff, and it's often a good spot to pick up red-eyed vireos, and um, and even some of the American wood warblers that we've had um, have turned up in the pit of sporum bushes. Uh, and this little horse paddock this year had um, just a, a couple of months ago had a grey cheek thrush in it, just by that little that little fire pit there that you can see on the left of the field. That was a favoured feeding spot of the grey cheek thrush. Um, yeah, and then you've got the golf golf course up to the north, and again, cracking area for for larks, pipits, waders, yeah. um, and obviously stunning views across to the other islands, and a, a good area around the edge of the golf course to to look out to the the north and the west and check the 
inter-island waters for sea ducks and grebes and various other bits. But um, again, I, I do spend quite a bit of time up on the golf course, and if I'm, I, do, I do play golf occasionally, but um, yeah, if I'm not playing golf, I'll be I'll be birding and for shrikes and other bits like that. So uh, yeah, really productive area. Oh, that's... And similarly to the the um, golf course, you've got St Mary's Airfield, which attracts a um, sort of similar assemblage of, of species. Um, yeah, you kind of sort of grassland waders and and your pipits and your and your larks. They always do yeah, annually fairly well for uh, buff-breasted uh, sandpiper and um, tawny pipit and that sort of thing in these areas. Amazing. Yeah, lots of these little nice country lanes <laughs> running through. That's my my family there on the wandering down. And that's, I think that might actually be just outside my um my, my 3k patch. I think that's down towards Pellistri. So not strictly in the 3k patch that that photo, but just a just an idea of the, the sort of little country lanes that we get. Yeah, just some few nice beaches as we get, you know, get down onto the beaches again for, for waders and turns. These areas are often productive and always worth checking. Some of them are a bit of a walk out to them. Um, others you can check from the road. And uh, yeah, this is a classic sort of habitat that we, I've come to um, check religiously in the last few years. Um, these sort of top of the beaches, sort of seaweed beds, rotten seaweed beds, are lots of flies under under the pit of spore and bushes. And this is where the um, the myrtle warbler was last year, and the Cape May warbler was subsequently in similar habitat on on Briar um, and Portly Beach. There, good for waders down there. Fantastic. And then yeah, it's a little video there, looking out some further across the islands. And then just a few little quick photos of some of the off islands as well within the 10k patch or the 10k radius. So this is Briar, um, and a little idea of the habitat we've got on Briar. That's a Blackburnian warbler field from last year. Um, yeah, it's my favourite of the islands to visit Briar for obvious reasons. And then we've got St Agnes. Um, again, they've all got the little charms to them. The, the off islands, Tresco, the cracking pools on Tresco, Abbey Pool and Great Pool. And obviously the uh, the tropical side of Tresco with the with the Abbey Gardens, <laughs> and then of course uh, the extension of the patch is uh, <laughs> is the Pelagics, and uh, with the the number of hours that we spend on on that boat in a year is probably more hours than a lot of people even get to spend on their patch through the course of the whole year. Um, you know, we're out there for uh, I don't know probably 150, 100, well just just myself anyway, probably 150, 160 hours a year spent on that boat. Um, and mostly Joe and Bob and the, the the guys who run it spend considerably more than that as well. Uh, yeah. Always good to have Bob Flood as uh, one of the people you work in your patch with as well. <laughs> it helps. It definitely helps. So, yeah. So that's uh, that's a little look at the um, at the patch itself. Oh, thanks for that uh, guided tour around the patch, Scott. Um, I believe you've got uh, a little something else for us to have a look at. Uh, not running quite so well in the presentation, but uh, yeah, if you just want to tell us what we're about to see. Yeah, so yeah, like I said, you've, you've seen the patch now. So um, yeah, I've just put a little video together of uh, the highlights from this year, which there was quite a few, obviously, with the seabird season that we had. Uh, and obviously a few American birds in the autumn. So um, I did a little voiceover for it, and um, I've already apologised to James. I sound do sound slightly monotonous uh, in the uh, <laughs> in the video. I recorded it late last night with um, when the kids were in bed. When I was sat in the spare room, I was trying to be quiet, and in trying to be quiet, I sound quite dull and boring. So I do apologise. But uh, as I said hopefully the the birds do the talking for me. I'm sure, given what we've seen or what we know you've seen this year. It will it will speak for itself. No, thanks very much, man. I'm Scott Reed, and these are some of the highlights from a superb year on the Isles of Scilly, which includes my three-kilometer patch on St Mary's, and also the rest of the Isles of Scilly, which all fit within a ten-kilometer radius from my home on St Mary's. The winter started off pretty quiet, but we had a lingering stone curlew, which was originally found in 2022, but it stayed into January. And other than that, there was just a handful of the usual wintering visitors that we we come to expect on the islands, Glauca Skull, Black Red Star, and the usual divers and grebes uh, in between the islands. An early Richard's Pippet arrived on St Mary's Airfield in mid-February, 
But the first really mega bird of the year was this stunning male lesser kestrel found on Pininis Head. As the spring progressed, more migrants started arriving and it was a particularly good spring for herons. This black crowned night heron, a small arrival of cattle egrets, and what proved to be an exceptional year all round for purple herons, with at least seven or eight individuals recorded across the island through the course of the year, mostly in spring, uh, including this one at Porthelic, and uh, there was also a couple of lower moors, one of which uh, I was looking up to find myself. It was also a great spring for woodchat shrikes, with nine recorded across the islands over a roughly two-week period, five of which were on St Mary's, with the remainder dotted around the various off-islands. As spring continued, we were treated to a tawny pipit on St Mary's golf course. And I was fortunate enough to find another, a few weeks later, flying over St Mary's airfield. There was a brief short-toed lark on Penina's head. And common migrants continued to arrive, which included these three turtle doves, which showed really well in a ploughed field up at Normandy. The adult laughing gull from 2022 returned to the Goo Lesser Blackback Gull Colony. And although this video was taken on Goo, the bird was actually viewable from the end of my road from Porth Cressa Beach. So I got it on the 3k patch. Silly's sixth common crane toured the islands, eventually making its way onto my house list. And shortly after, there was an unprecedented arrival of red kites with an estimated 150 arriving on the islands in one morning. And amongst them, I picked up this honey buzzard as it sailed over my house. A day out on Briar to see this Tamming stint produced some of the good birds, including wood sandpiper, another woodchat shrike, and this lovely grey-headed wagtail. One of the absolute highlights of spring was an arrival of bee eaters on St Mary's. A flock of 12 birds turned up in the Old Town area, and stayed around the fields at the back of Lower Moors for several days. As we moved into early summer, pelagic season started and we were soon being treated to great shearwaters, quarry shearwaters, and it was a particularly good early pelagic season for Sabine's gulls and long-tailed skewers. Wilson storm petrels began arriving in big numbers in what turned out to be a record year for the species off Scilly and across Britain as a whole. Quarry shearwaters also began to build to some unprecedented numbers with several thousand being seen per pelagic trip and this just gives some indication as to the scenes that we became used to seeing over the course of the pelagic season. And then incredibly on one pelagic trip, two Scopoli shearwaters were found amongst the quarries, and this was just the beginning of what turned out to be an exceptional event in British seabirding, with a species that has only been recorded previously three times in Britain, and over a period of six weeks, no less than 30 were photographed in Salonian waters. Another mega seabird soon followed, as Britain's first at-sea record of South Polar Skewer gave brief but fantastic views as it flew over the sapphire and was expertly identified by Bob Flood. Little did we know, however, that the pelagic season was only just warming up and during a pelagic on the first Monday in August, a red-footed booby flew past the boat as it was returning to St Mary's Unfortunately for me, I wasn't on board that day, and having all but given up hope of ever seeing the bird, we sensationally rediscovered it, sat on top of the Bishop Rock Lighthouse the following Monday evening. Much to the delight of several thousand twitchers, 
that's where the bird remained for the rest of the pelagic season. And of course, the obligatory celebratory photos were taken with myself there, Ash Fisher and Bob Flood. Even my wife and three young children ventured out there the following day and had a great time watching the booby for an hour or so, despite a little bit of seasickness. The bird did occasionally go out fishing, and one Sunday afternoon we bumped into it at sea a couple of miles south of the lighthouse. At this point we couldn't imagine how the season could possibly get any better, but our second south polar skewer of the summer suggested that the action was still far from over. Then came a message from the skipper of the Sapphire, Joe Pender, who was out at the Bishop Rock Lighthouse with a boat full of red-footed booby twitches to say that there wasn't only a red-footed booby on the lighthouse, but now also a brown booby, which was sat on the granite ledge some hundred or so feet below where the red-footed booby was perched at the same time. Undoubtedly one of the most iconic events in British birding history. Just a short video here showing brown booby down at the bottom amongst the shags and red footed booby top right there with a couple of great blackback gulls. Whether it was due to the Scopoli shearwaters, the boobies or the South Polar skewers or a combination of those birds the celebrations, both on the boat and in the pub, were never ending throughout August. Back on land and back on the patch, a good arrival of drift migrants signalled the start of autumn, and from the west, we enjoyed a handful of buff-breasted sandpipers including this particularly confiding bird on St Mary's Golf Course. As Hurricane Lee caused mayhem in South Wales, we were a little slower out of the blocks on Scilly, although this cliff swallow, which also made it onto the house list, gave us an indication that the weather system did also produce for Scilly, and over the course of the next few days, we started to see more American vagrants turning up. And finally, we all got the adrenaline hit that we'd been waiting for when this northern parula was discovered on St. Martin's. A superb grip back from the golden era of silly birding in the 80s and 90s. As many as four bobolink were discovered across Scilly, including two below St. Mary's airfield. And as well as transatlantic vagrants, birds continue to trickle in from the east, including little buntings and this olive bag pivot at Longstone. A monochrome snipe was reported at Porthelic, and after a few hours of scrutiny, we managed to see enough features on the bird to indicate that it was indeed a Wilson snipe, and hopefully the BBRC agree. It wasn't just American birds causing excitement, but insects as well. With the astonishing discovery of multiple American painted ladies, as well as several green Dana dragonflies, including individuals on Briar, St Agnes, and several on St Mary's. The autumn started to wind down as we approached November, but another late blow from the west produced this very confiding grey cheek thrush at the bottom of Rocky Hill Lane on St Mary's. A spell of easterlies in early November produced Silly's first wax wings since 2019, including three on an apple tree in Hewtown. On the 10th of November, I decided to go for a full day of birding on Briar. And only 20 minutes after arriving, this small sheltered field caught my attention and after a few minutes of pishing, 
a small grey warbler appeared out of the shadows, which turned out to be Britain's third and Silly's first Cape May warbler. I put the news out immediately, and within a couple of hours, every birder on St Mary's had joined me on Briar, and we spent the rest of the day studying the sunshine on Green Bay as the Cape May warbler performed exceptionally well, fly catching in the seaweed, occasionally returning to its favoured pittosporum bush overhanging the beach. The bird remained loyal to the area for over three weeks, and despite the logistical difficulties of travelling to Scilly, and in particular Briar, in November, a couple of hundred birders from the mainland managed to make the journey down to see the bird, including some great friends from back up in the northwest. As is to be expected, the Cape May warbler was the last major bit of excitement for the year, but late November and early December still had a couple of treats left in store, in the form of Silly's first velvet scoter for nearly 20 years, a late eastern yellow wagtail was discovered on St Mary's, and finally, to finish off the year, the humpback whale known as Pie, who has spent several winters now around the Isles of Scilly, in particular St Mary's, returned once again and continues to perform exceptionally well off the south side of the island. Okay, uh, right, that was Scott's video. Thank you very much. Scott, any particular favourites out of those bits and pieces, aside from the obvious Cape May Warbler we've already talked about, which would be your favourite bits or any particular events that you, you enjoyed most of all? Um, the, yeah, the, the seabird season, I think, will just it'll go down as an iconic moment, an I iconic event. I think the whole season uh, will be classed as an event, really, just much like the, the um, American land bird arrival in Pembrokeshire and, and beyond. Um, I think the, the seabird event was something we've never seen before and probably might never see again, or, or we may, it may become yeah. more normal. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, with what's going to be climate. the new normal with that, I guess, is, yeah. is going to be the big thing here. But obviously with a big La Nina year, those differences in water temperatures, mm. are we waiting for the next one? Or what's you know what's going to happen? But no, fantastic. It'll, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, but um, but yeah, no, just yeah, the, the South Polar skewers, the double booby day, the yeah, there's just just endless amounts of highlights, and it, it just got to the point where we were just we're pinching ourselves, thinking you know what's next? How how can this get any better? And it it, it yeah. kept on happening. So um, yeah, Amazing. yeah that's probably yeah, then that'll be probably the highlight of the year. Oh, fantastic. Vincent, I just wanted to bring you in here, obviously, yeah. as a as a non-UK birder. Um, what do you know of the Isles of Scilly? And have you got Ooh. any questions for Scott? Or... Oh, man. I, I do live on an island, so I, I really connect with the point of view of Scott that uh, the, the island uh, list is uh, by far the most uh, important. So I live on the island of Tessel, and I uh, tr try to uh, bird as much uh, here as, uh, as I can. And won't leave the island for anything probably but uh well it, it, it but uh get, feeling a little bit humbled by uh, the presentation it was an awesome presentation really uh, a nice looking uh, island although tesla is beautiful as well but uh yeah totally different uh, uh much more uh, um, uh cultured uh, land and uh, much more uh, people and uh, but still good birding though and uh, the Isles of Scilly, I know that uh, two years ago, a group of um, Dutch birders uh, with uh, uh, Mark Huyt from Katwijk uh, visited the islands and they had a really good time there as well with the Blackburnian and also a lot of uh, shearwaters and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, probably maybe one day I leave my own island and visit, it, uh, visit uh, the Isles of Scilly. But we'll see. Yeah. But yeah, and I, I, well, it's so well known. It speaks for itself. But uh, every year it gets better. So, hope hopefully we 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 can uh, tag along here on Tessel. <laughs> well, fingers crossed. You've got your own American warblers. Uh, we maybe do. a little bit of uh, wintering we drip do. down for you. You know. Yeah, you but know. There, 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 there's a big mass of land lying in the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 but yeah. but but. but 
we 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 did have uh, black uh, black pole warbler and uh, red eyed vireo already. So it's every 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 fall we get we 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 keep our fingers crossed, and I dream of uh, finding one of those uh, here on my patch. Oh yeah, look look look, because my son he gave me this little little oh, little wow. piece of artwork. Wow. It's getting better better better. This is the black Bernie and war uh, the black pole warbler, which was seen here a few years back, and it's a uh, uh, artwork by uh, Bram Rijksen. And uh, I had my birthday um, two weeks ago, and my son who was sitting here, who was also a birder, Koen. Uh, he, Hi, uh, he he picked it up for uh, for me and uh, he gave us uh, he gave it to me uh, on behalf of uh, all my four kids so that's really nice oh fantastic well yeah, that's many happy stuff. returns for that one Vincent yeah 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 and uh, fingers crossed for that American warbler right oh, I'm yes. just gonna fire up the presentation now and yes. we'll get cracked on um, but thank you Scott for the run through on your patch right so. Us away from the the big rarities, obviously November was stormy with lots and lots of rainfall, lots and lots of strong westerly, southwesterly winds hammering across the Atlantic, which probably delivered Scots uh, Cape May. So, but it also meant that there was probably less birding undertaken by the PwC community after such a busy September and October. So. Um, Highlights were a little bit thin on the ground. Uh, a quick scour of Twitter found this uh, glossy ibis uh, for Martin Elkert. Um, this was, um, well, I believe this was right at the um, back end. I nearly said something else. Back end of November. Uh, and then Stuart Ainsworth um, at Gibraltar Point. Uh, Managing to get a photo of Nigel Lowndes' green winged teal, and then uh, a Richard's pipit, so slightly less glamorous than his oven bird, but a Richard's pipit for sure, Morris on rum. So some fantastic stuff there. Um, so we're going to get into the mini leagues now. Um, I'm going to hand over to Scott to do this lot. If you're happy, Scott, just to a quick uh, look at uh, fines and the big scores, if you please. Of course. OK, so starting off with the Estuarine 10 kilometre league. And we've got Irene Boston leading the way at Dersingham. That's Nettisham area. Um, so, yeah, some some good totals there. Um, no no highlights for, for anyone there in, in this league. Well, it's been a bit static that yeah, one for a little uh, bit for a little while but some um some nice totals there and maybe with the estuaries they'll they'll um be able to add um yeah, maybe some some wintering wildfowl or wintering waders possibly yeah in december so we'll uh we'll wait and see um so yeah, let's try and uh so the estuarine 3k league okay so we got um toby collett at frampton leading the way um it's got a, it's only only five ahead of uh, Paul Sullivan in second at uh, Freeston. So, uh, yeah, there's obviously plenty to play for there at the top of the table in the uh, in December. So, yeah, Toby's Buick Swan fine. That's always nice. Is that, is that three points still? Buick yeah, Swan, we, we be, changed yeah. it because basically anywhere away from that kind of core region in East yeah. Anglia on the fens, well, Ryan argued. Uh, to the back teeth that they're common but since moving to Cornwall I think he's revised his opinion to be honest um, but yeah um, just yeah, yeah three points yeah. three bonus points so yeah, that's, that's very nice, nice. and yeah. uh, but I, th I think I'd be, I'd be much happier there with the uh, the, the Sherlock as well yeah. that's uh, that's a cracking Definitely. bird and then Paul Bowerman down at seven side down in third He's had bearded tit, um, first record for nine years. That, that must have been nice. And tree creeper, twite, and great northern diver. A yeah, few birds there that I'd kill for on silly. So, um, yeah, superb. Stuart Derbyshire in fourth. And uh, Toby Phelps down there at Burton May Wetlands. He's, uh, yeah, he's, he's had some years. He's been there, is he? I think that's no, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't blame him really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, two hundred and one points, still, still a nice total there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Pete Hazelwood down in six. Super Swan Grit Northern Diver um, down in eighth. Martin Elcote 
things about the start. So so found Glossy Ibis, that's nice, and uh, and Jack Snipe. Less than annual Jack Snipe on a S3 patch. That's uh, I think you must yeah. must need a thermal scope or just be Possibly, able to get a bit yeah. closer to some of those areas. I think I think Topsham's a little bit hard to walk those the stubbles because I think uh, Bowling Green Marsh and what have you, isn't it? Yeah, and then yeah, Andy Day in ten. Oh, sorry, Adam Day in, in ninth. Gordon Hodgson in tenth at Frampton. Great Northern diver there. Andy Collins in eleventh. John Colin Hume um, down in twelfth. Boring month. Yeah, okay. That was a few of those with the lack of highlights. Siskin, nice bird. And uh, Craig Mackay down in or Craig McKay, sorry, down in thirteenth. Okay, and on the second page there, um, not too much happening in the highlights, but um, yeah, John Johnny Rankin with a first patch potcher, classy wildfowl. I know he likes his he likes his ducks, does uh, does Johnny? So yeah, fair play. <laughs> uh, yeah, coastal East England 10k. Uh, got James Brown uh, Hopton uh, on 346, uh, a good total. Uh, East East Coast always going to put up some big numbers. And uh, Owen Beaumont there at Salt Fleet B and Thaddlethorpe area. I, I used to bird quite a bit when I was working. He's uh, doing okay there. And Jake Gertie um, down in third place in uh, East Suffolk Coast. And yep, yeah, no no highlights there. So uh, yeah, well. Quiet November. Yeah. Okay, the the big league. The Look coastal, at that. Co- yeah, no, there's some. Some uh, scary numbers going on there for Coastal East England. Um, yeah, Jacob Spinks, uh, no surprise. Spur, as always, uh, leading the way. Some incredible numbers there. Uh, I mean, 432 points. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, and obviously Rob, Rob in second there. Um, no highlights for either of those two, but um, yeah, again, just what, what a year they must have had there. Uh, any year at Spurn is, is superb. And then again, Kilnsey for Mark Andrews. So yeah, no surprise that the top three there is all all in the Spurn area. Uh, a few highlights, uh, yeah, like we saw Greaming Teal, Shorelark, Buick Swan by Nigel Lound at Gibraltar, which is nice. And uh, uh, Will Will Scott at Bempton Cliffs um, with uh, down in 14th, uh, not yeah, a bit further down the leaderboard, but some some cracking uh, cracking birds there. Bearded Tit, Shorelark, Twite, and Little Oak again, another bird I'd love to get down here. A uh, quick look through some of the highlights for on, on page number two. Um, Duncan Watson at Time Mouth, uh, Wax Wings, Phoning Grieve, Long Tailed Duck, very nice. And Peter Williams down in 22nd place, but Shorelark again. Um, seems like maybe it's been a good autumn for Shorelarks down on the East Coast. A lot of people seem to have them. And yeah, Snow Bunt and, and Little Oak as well. Yeah, there's been a few patches with them. And again, third page, popular popular league this, um, but no no highlights there. Got some yeah, nice numbers. Coastal Island, Daniel Newton. Yeah, unsurprisingly, top of the leaderboard, and uh, yeah, great northern diver there. Nice. Okay, Coastal Scotland, 10k. Uh, Rob Hughes leading the way out of the out of the three competitors with uh, Great White Egret and. Maybe unsurprisingly, a waxwing. Um, I guess there was plenty around the patches uh, through the course of the month. I think he's opened um, up a lead this month. Rob's, uh, it's been pretty close between the three of them all year. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's opened up a probably insurmountable now. Um, yeah, because, yeah, I think the other two will struggle to catch him there in, in December with, with those totals. But um, yeah, maybe all, all to play for there for second place between uh, Nina and uh, Julian. So uh, yeah, interesting to see how that one. It's just Hands an out. ivory goal and a Rossi's goal. That's all you need. Yeah, that, Shake it all uh, right up. Yeah, that'll, that'll get them the win, I think, if they, uh, if they did that. Okay, Coastal Scotland, 3K patches. Uh, Colin Davidson, uh, Davidson leading the way. Um, uh, 224 points. Again, probably in December now. The, the rest of the pack are going to struggle to catch him there. But Andrew Whitehouse in second with some highlights for November. Hen Harrier. Side Chiff and Black Throated Diver, some nice birds there. And uh, Julian Smith in third place, not too far behind Andrew. So, again, maybe he could do a bit of catching up to do in the last month of the year. And then, yeah, no other highlights really, but uh, a wax wing for, for Robert um, Nibster, Nibster, in Cave's Nest. <laughs> so, uh, Coastal South, England 10K. Uh, Amy Rob Johns leading the way still. 
uh, who always does well at Titchfield, does Amy. Uh, but no highlights for this month. Um, Bob Ford uh, coming in second place, uh, not too far behind Amy and with some good highlights there. White-tailed eagle, I no points for that though, I'm guessing it was a introduced bird. Um, Red-eyed vireo, was not scored either, as it was 400 metres beyond that. That's that's uh, that's oh, going to sting. No. Yeah, that's going to sting. And uh, oh yeah, uh, he would have uh, he'd have been trying everything to get that. Yeah. He'd have been right up with uh, Amy if he'd have, if he'd have got that. But yeah. never mind, Bob. Next time, yeah. next time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and Chris Town and oh sorry, <laughs> nah, all right now. Nah, <laughs> Um, and Coastal South England. Oh, this is the yeah, second page of the. Oh, sorry, this is the first page of Coastal South England 3K. Ryan Irvin leading the way, 310 points. That's quite a substantial lead there. So I think uh, yeah, no, anyone will struggle to catch him uh, in December. A good good year for him down in uh, down in Cornwall. Uh, Steve Waite at the Access Street in second place, and uh, yeah, Leeches Petrol, Long Tail Duck, Pom Skewer, Arctic Skewer, Brambling. Yeah, uh, so some nice birds for November there, and Amy down in third place. Um, let's have a look at some of the highlights. Kevin Ryland's uh, Palaces Warbler, very nice. Um, Tim Jones Bull Point, the Leeches Petrel. Um, let's see if he found that. Some nice finders points there, and uh, Bob Ford in Weymouth with a uh, Phrygian duck at Radipole and American Golden Plover at Lodmore. Some good birds there. A bit quieter in the second bit there. Yeah, yeah, skip through that one. Okay, thanks very much, Scott. Cheers for <laughs> springing that on you due to our poor turnout. Um, but thank you very much for uh, Gamely um, getting through that. So we'll move on to our second guest this evening. Uh, yep. And no longer a guest, I guess, going forward. Uh, Vincent, who very kindly has joined the admin team, as I alluded to earlier. So... Yes. Um, I thought I'd search your Twitter for a picture of you gurning, um, just to <laughs> to spice up the page. But um, obviously, you've uh, joined us earlier in the year. You talked to us about why you wanted to take part in Patchwork Challenge. Um, yep. Uh, the initiation of a Dutch mini league, mini league, which has been great. It's been uh, really good to see uh, people taking part and some big scores as well from quite a few different birders. Um, yeah. So uh, do you want to just tell us about your Patchwork Challenge year before we get into it? Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, excellent. Over to you. Yeah. When I was on early in, uh, in the year, I, I, I uh, elaborated on my uh, exploits, uh, like walking big distances and then uh, getting really tired and then thinking, OK, there should be a more uh, 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 economic uh, way of birding uh, closer to home. So the patchwork challenge was uh, just uh, the right thing for me. And uh, well, I live on the island of Tessel and I didn't really uh, uh, made a big effort to just uh, uh, try to get a patch with uh, a lot of habitat, uh, but just a regular patch where I bird a lot, uh, just around the house, uh, where we walk the dog and some good uh, areas where I bird uh, a few times a week. So it's like a 2.2 square kilometers, more than enough uh, to do. And I keep the 10K uh, circle uh, when, I, when when there's a really nice weather like uh, on the picture uh, on on your right, uh, not as uh, scenic as uh, the Isles of Scilly, but still very beautiful. And I just uh, go uh, uh, to the southern point of Tessel and uh, do some really good uh, bush whacking and uh, finding a, a nice uh, a migratory species. So that's uh, the whole point. And uh, well, I, I thought uh, this year uh, the first really uh, um, um, patchwork uh, challenge year that it was uh, a nice year. I uh, set my goals and I just made it to 200 species for the patch oh, and fantastic. something like and something like 225 or something uh, for the 10K uh, circle. So uh, really nice uh, diversity and uh, not really uh, top class finds for me this year, but a lot of quality, uh, like uh, three point species, uh, just uh, a few four pointers, but uh, Really good uh, selection of uh, really nice birds uh, that I don't see every year on the patch, like uh, the shorelark, 
which uh, was found by a fellow birder here uh, just uh, a few hundred meters from my house and uh, it was lovely to see it there and for the yeah for the fall season the end of october and especially uh, early november was really good because i'm not on the north sea side of the island so sea watching here i have to wait for big northwesterlies so they get uh, the birds get blown into the wadden sea area and then they come on the eastern side of the island where i live so this year uh, the first weekend of uh, november was uh, really good with a friday afternoon just after work and an early saturday morning when the uh, birds uh, sped out uh, back to the north uh, sea we had uh, storm petrol several leeches petrels black-throated diver little orc all in a few hours of sea watch so that was uh, nice. the yeah amazing uh, stuff and a few days later also uh, blown in with the wind we had two different uh, great northern divers so uh, very happy with those uh, because also uh, not uh, every year we, we we get them on the patch here yeah. so all in all really nice uh, year and also very uh, uh, happy with uh, the uh, backup uh, of uh, other uh, dutch birders uh, so uh, just a few fanatics that uh, they uh, said okay let's go to, uh, to uh, uh, 2023 we do it as well and uh, then our last uh, few days uh, with Christmas, I thought, okay, well, make a new plans for the new year. Let's see if we can uh, launch uh, a Dutch uh, Patchwork Challenge. Uh, and what we do here is, I'm not sure where we are, but we get, um, uh, I think a few hours ago, it was uh, put up uh, at uh, the site of Dutch Birding. So everyone uh, who's uh, watching it, here on the video, they can go to the site of Dutch Birding and uh, we have a nice article with a lot of uh, hyperlinks uh, also to uh, uh, the Twitter feed of Patch uh, 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 Birding and um, uh, your videos. And uh, we uh, have um, the, uh, well, I think the, 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 the most people in the UK, they use um, eBird probably. Yeah, we, we t uh, tend to be the BTO bird track, but I believe you okay. guys are using something slightly different. Yeah, we do. We, we have, uh, well, I think the, you, you can use it in England as well. It's uh, called observation.org, and here yeah. we call it varnaming.nl. And you see it on the, the, the right screen, and uh, what it does, it, you can uh, have, uh, define your own patch, and... Uh, that we have already ha we already have uh, 68 participants uh, and we're, we're I think we're going through the roof probably uh, hitting uh, 100 before the first of January. A lot of uh, people who are uh, really enthusiastic and uh, the, 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 the 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 good part is that what you can do on the website is you have you you can define your patch, then you see all the historic records for your patch. Oh wow for uh, all the uh, all the way back to 1900 or something like that and what you can do you can uh, lock all your uh, records and you can make uh, your year list the only thing we don't have yet is uh, the point system so i borrowed it from uh, you guys and uh, we uh, uh, made some changes uh, for uh, specifically for the netherlands so uh, some uh, birds get more points some uh, a little bit fewer but uh, I think we have also the even the Netherlands, such a small country, we have huge differences for uh, uh, patches uh, along the coast, like mine, yeah. or when you live inland. So there's no really a good system. But maybe uh, during this year for 2025, we can come up with uh, something better. But uh, yeah. for the for the moment, really happy. And um, so um, uh, also uh, when uh, people from uh, Belgium or Germany or Denmark or wherever think uh, they can uh, 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 join us of course uh, we are in uh, Dutch birding is a really I think probably uh, the leading um, uh, um, uh, magazine for a uh, West Palearctic birding so we we, we uh, were happy uh, to uh, to host uh, any uh, birder who uh, wants to uh, join us so if yeah, uh, people so uh, think yeah I think you've got uh, you've got Jan in uh, in central Germany I think he's yeah. already joining up and uh, yep. you know I think our, the concept last year was always for it to be kind of a broader low countries kind of thing wasn't it although I don't think we actually got any Belgian birders in last time but um, yeah so last year 
it was a bit bit of a last minute race to try and I remember sorting out the sheet with you uh, yeah, sure. between Christmas and New Year using sort of Sovon and uh, trying to work out statuses and yeah. uh, really bastardise what we had in place to and um, obviously we've now fully kind of given you guys well not given we've uh you know it, it's sort of franchised out to to you uh vincent to kind of run that thing and to to yeah. run the points as you want really so yeah. um i think our point last year was just to try and um make sure it's the same sort of approach to points or to make it because yeah. obviously you were in the same uh broader competition but i think this year you know full autonomy autonomy do what you want. Uh, it's brilliant. It's fantastic. I mean, you know, you're neck and neck with us for sign-ups for the UK. Obviously, um, I think last year we got we got a great deal of sign-ups, and uh, particularly for people who have not had a go at this sort of thing before. Um, I suspect that that will be slimmed down a little bit more to the hardcore people, and then there will be other people coming in, so it will be a little bit different for the UK version. Uh, but it'd be really interesting to see how it goes and how it goes from strength to strength. And I'm obviously yeah. with bringing you into the team, really keen for that representation uh, to be as part of the YouTube channel and for you guys to have as full a part of that. And obviously to do your own bits and pieces as well. Um, I believe you're even getting your own logo. Yeah. Yeah. We, well, well, we ho hopefully, yes, yes, yes. Because Arnold Meyer, who was also uh, joining us uh, this year and uh, who did also the uh, low carbon birding uh, with me last year, only on food, 10K uh, uh, radius. So, uh, uh, and uh, he's uh, really fanatic and maybe a little bit too, because, uh, because the, uh, he, he, he already thought, oh no, not again in 24. <laughs> My legs are hurting, and uh, he, he's really he's really fanatic. So Gotta when, when he joins, life. he joins, you know, all the way. But he's uh, he he has his business of uh, uh, making uh, uh, great uh, presentations and logos and uh, uh, magazines and all stuff. Uh, and the 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 good part is that we thought, okay, what uh, species is a little bit iconic for uh, patch birding in the Netherlands? It should be uh, easy to draw. Uh, uh, it should be uh, a nice one, uh, hard to get on most patches. So we thought of uh, a male uh, smew. And uh, 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 my son's girlfriend, she can really good, she's a good uh, artist uh, with drawing. And uh, on Christmas, uh, on Boxing Day, she drew this uh, really nice male smew. And uh, I um, emailed it uh, to uh, Arnold and he's, probably uh, uh, going to make a nice uh, Dutch patchwork challenge logo. So oh, for now on, uh, on the Dutch birding uh, website is still the uh, patch birding logo with a crane, but anytime soon we have our own, uh, just uh, to uh, nice distinction uh, from you yeah, guys. Absolutely. And once again, we, we don't say this enough, but Massive shout out to Jaya Crakes on Guernsey to Mark Lawler who did our original uh, oh yeah logo. Yeah. It's it's absolutely insane. You know that that's we are so pleased to have got that all those years ago because it it absolutely sums up. You know cranes. You come across a crane on your patch and it's a it's a good day in the UK and I'm sure it's a good day in the Netherlands too. So. Oh yes. Yes. <laughs> so that's yeah, incredibly grateful, and that sounds fantastic, Vincent. Like yeah. really, really enthusiastic to see how this develops, and uh, hopefully, there's lots and lots of participation and lots yeah, and lots so. of good birds found as well. Yeah, I think the the, the good part is you know just hey, getting out and uh, have have uh, uh, all sorts of uh, patches really uh, uh, checked on a really regular basis and uh, learn from each other and uh, I, we we already had like uh, not this year but last year in 2022 yep. when the low carbon birding uh, was uh, also here in the Netherlands which uh, I think there were about 20 25 uh, participants here in the Netherlands and one of them found a yellow browed bunting somewhere inland so anything is possible anywhere so Absolutely. we are really uh, trying to make a point of uh, getting out and finding good birds and also like sort of a citizen science project because yeah. you know, the, the the rare ones are good but how cool would it be 
if you uh, uh, log a lot of uh, uh, records of also very uh, um, regular species and we, we, you, you can uh, check whether there are still uh, tree sparrows on your patch or gray partridges that uh, the, the, the species has slowly uh, uh, leaving our countryside. So a lot of possibilities. So yeah, we're happy with uh, so many uh, um, people uh, joining in. Well, that absolutely joins up with the ethos of Patchwork Challenge, uh, particularly in our first incarnation when we had websites and blogs and people doing lots and lots of effort, um, which we don't have the time for anymore. But yeah, um, yeah we uh, at one stage, I believe we were contributing seven or eight percent of the bird track records in the UK within the competition. So uh, that was uh, that must be. 2013 2014 somewhere around that sort of time but yeah um it's really good to obviously support these things and really generate data get those get those collection systems um integrated into the way birders work and now obviously ebird lists and bird track lists are second nature to most birders as they're on their batches so it's really good to hear that happening right well thank you for that roundup uh vincent yeah. and uh we will get crack on no doubt we'll hear more uh as we get into it uh through sure. the year we look forward to your updates right mini league session two uh probably need something a bit harder now after um all of that talking so far so we'll uh get into it um we have coastal wales and dave astin's at the gan he's leading on 171 points he's got a big old lead over alex jones although alex found a nice yellow brow fourth record in eight years which isn't bad for a duck pond in real although no bonus points for yellow brow warbler anymore what's up vincent <laughs> right um then we've got peter howler in cardiff bay he's in third place he's one good bird away from alex so you never know maybe he could take second right in Coastal Wales 10K, Matt Boer, Abigeli has done no birding for ages. Uh, Mark Hughes has equally added very little, so that remains pretty static. Um, then we're in Coastal West England, which is basically the Wirral and Lancashire. Uh, Jane Turner at Hoylake um, managed to get waxwings in the garden. I did see a photo. I've completely forgotten to put it in the presentation of a slightly blurry waxwing from Jane, but top draw getting a waxwing in the garden. I did say last month, we'll talk about them in October and September. We're not going to talk about them too much more because there's going to be them everywhere. Um, have you had any in the Netherlands, Vincent? Because I know you were petitioning yeah. to to get them up to three points yeah we did we, but uh, we had some in october and also some small groups i think the biggest here on tesla was something like 25 and yeah. uh well it was short-lived short rush of uh, wax wings and uh well most of them vanished uh, within week and a half yeah. two weeks no but I did, I did i did i did get one on the patch a migrant flying uh, past yeah this was it was nice excellent excellent I managed to avoid my patch with them this this autumn. I don't know how. Every every time right. I went, there were no wax wings. Everyone got them on Vismig every time I was working, and I found them outside. But you know, it's the way it goes. Yes. Uh, Sean O'Hara in second place in coastal West England at Liso, so basically the same patch as Jane, and then Stephen Dunstan at Blackpool. I believe Stephen has updated uh, for the year end, so I look forward to seeing his score and whether he's closed the gap um then um pierre hasn't updated since may i don't think so nothing new there in the coastal 10k inland north 10k we've got toby holmes at red mars reservoirs he is leading on 152 points from joe woods at wakefield and pete williams at lockton there's quite a big gap so it probably looks like that's that one done and dusted uh, but inland north, this is much closer. So all year we've had Richard Scott and Duncan by absolutely duking it out at the top here. Uh, at the moment, it's Richard Scott by six points. Um, he's on 195, which is a really big score for inland, you know, 150 species. He's obviously found a couple of good birds to outstrip Duncan as well. So um, really, really good stuff. Uh, Mark Langs Langston also uh, in touching distance, although probably a bit far back from Richard to, to uh, bridge the gap. 
looks like Richard's already snuck a fire, an early December firecrest into the score as well, because I was a little bit slow taking it off until the fifth. So uh, we've also got a uh, Great Northern Diver for John Law and a Marsh Harrier for Paul Newton at Russet. Uh, second division, um, nothing much of interest there. And third page... And these are people that are updated largely in month one, I think. So we'll skip over that. We get to Inland Scotland 10K. We've got George Dunbar at Loch Leven. He's on 135 points. Um, he is leading Chris Pendlebury. Chris has been topped for almost the entire year. And George has just burnt off into the sunset right at the end of the year. Chris, you've got two days. Can you catch it back up, man? Uh, Mike Hodgkin at Penny Cook in third on 111. Um, Inland Scotland, 3K patch. We've got Luke Wake at Loch Lomond on 140. He leads all but uh, Batia by 11 points. Um, who's at Loch Winnock? Then Alex Ash is in third at Kill Malcolm. Um, who's had some Waxwings, Hoopers, Merlin and Barnell. Some good November fare. And then we move on to Patch Gold. So I've rattled through those fairly quickly. Um, Scott, you, you're in the news again. You, you've had you've had a velvet scoter. <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah. We, we we get common scoter every year, and to be honest, I've, I think I've seen six maybe surf scoters here now. I've had three, at least three, maybe four surf scoters here just this um, just this autumn, early winter alone. Uh, but Velvet was always missing from a silly list, as it was for a lot of um, locals that have only lived here in the past 10, 15 years. Because as you can see in my tweet there, the last uh, silly Velvet scooter was 19 years ago. Incredible. Wow. Um, and it was actually found by, it was found off Briar by a um, uh, a visiting birder who was twitching the Cape May Warbler. And he, he, he put it out and obviously there was an initial concern that it, could be maybe might be a white winged scoter so uh yeah. um we lots of asked him for his best photos and couldn't really do anything with them and uh yeah. there was the following day flat calm days you can see there i managed to pick it up from the garrison yeah and we uh we all chartered a jet boat about 10 of us locals <laughs> chartered a jet boat and got out there uh, first of all just to get good views of a, a what is yeah. a rare bird for silly but also to nail the idea and just make yeah, sure yeah. it definitely I mean, wasn't anything you can see nicely in that profile shot. It's got that classic scoop profile rather than the sort of step profile of white winged or um, the hump of Stenages or, you know, you've got to get, you've got to be in it to win it, but fantastic bird. And uh, they're really smart. I love velvet scoters. I'm quite lucky. I get them every year in small numbers, but not views like that. Normally, normally it's gray, it's drizzly, it's cold and it's a mile out. So, yeah, very jealous of that. That's very nice. Um, I wanted something just to highlight the uh, wax wings. So in a three minute trawl of our Twitter account, this is the best wax wing photo I could find, which is dreadful because, I mean, how many wax wing photos have you seen this winter of people f four inches away? Perfectly sharp. But well done to Mark at Liz Fan. Uh, for finding uh, seven there, and then we've got the classic patch gold up at uh, up on Tyree for um, John um, with a coot. So, and if I saw it like that, I'd be thinking American coot on Tyree. I've got to be honest. <laughs> that that profile looks interesting, but uh, obviously just your standard fare. But well done to John for adding that number one nine three in the end of November. Nice. so that's that we have put up some polls we finally put the polls up for um court of appeal that we promised from the last two and then completely forgotten to do so um there if you go on to the patchwork challenge twitter um hopefully this is up in time you'll catch the back end of those polls uh, if you're super lucky, uh, but we're looking at whether Northern Bullfinch and Northern Tree Creeper deserve extra points, whether a county rarity on, say, an off-island deserves extra points. So specifically in this case, it's Stock Dove on Orkney. And um, I cannot remember what the fourth poll was, but uh, oh, yes, 
uh, if you find a lesser golden plover, this is one we talked about last month in on the um, on the pod. Was if you find a lesser golden plover, you rule out everything else, um, but you can't get it to species. You can't work out whether it's American or Pacific. Do you get points? And that one is currently pretty much 50-50, so we'll have to see how that goes. Um, mm. we'll, we'll update you on those down the way. We did also get a request from Vincent for, for this year's scores uh, to up, obviously, Waxwing, we've talked about, but also Twight, I believe, um, yeah. and what have you. Um, do you still want to do that? or? Well, of course, like the... Waxwing probably, which is much more uh, uh, an influx uh, species, invasion uh, species, uh, that's probably more uh, difficult. And Twight, I think from the British point of view, which is uh, uh, much more common than here. Um, and I talked about it with uh, Rob van Bemmelen, who's also uh, had Twight uh, on his patch, even uh, twitchable, and which was for his uh, uh, area where uh, there are a lot of good birds there uh, for everyone a new species for uh, the uh, um, for the area so i think twite nowadays in the netherlands for actually most patches is a very 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 hard species to come by uh, i think there are a few uh, uh, salt marsh uh, areas we have two areas on tessa where they are annual or uh, almost annual and maybe uh, up north uh, the what on sea coast what we, we they are uh, regular there but apart from those areas really hard to come by so i think it, in, in our dutch system we already uh, upgraded it to uh, three points which would uh, uh, i think do justice to anyone who uh, find uh, twite on the patch excellent well i leave it entirely in your hands for 2023 do you want twite to be two points or three points vincent Three points. That's that's what it is. Update your scores, everybody. Add those add those extra points if you found Twite. I'm a little bit blasé. I've got to be be honest because I it's one of the specialities of my patch. Yeah, sure. Uh, sure. I have a very wind blown, miserable looking, depressing, flat coastal <laughs> East England patch. I get lots of Twite. Yeah, really lots of Twite. So um, I'll be honest. If I um. If I got a twite on silly, I think I'd be going to the court of appeal for a uh, for a, some, more, some more points than it's worth. Uh, I, I don't actually know off the top of my head when the last silly twite was. It's definitely not been in the last six years since I've been yeah. living I, here. So um, yeah, a, a very very rare bird out here. I, yeah, six. I know it's a really rare bird in the southwest in general. I I was very lucky to find a regular regular wintering spot in Somerset when I worked down there on a big power plant that cannot be named. Um, and yeah, the, the local, just because I was hearing them regularly on my patch, went down there and um, just a patch of Spartina grass in the salt marsh. Because yep. uh, I was down there all the time, you know, every other week. And I was flicking between my patch on the East Coast and coming down to this area in North Somerset. Um, just was familiar with it. And I think that it was only a handful of birds, but they they persisted there for several years. Who knows where they came from, whether they were sort of Pennines birds or something like that, which obviously that population is absolutely on its backside if there's any left. Um, and there's a handful still in North Wales. And then that's about it, really, isn't it? Until you get right up into Scotland. So, um, yeah, really, really good bird. If you're on a Scottish Isle, you're on Mull. You go into the Treshnish Islands and there's twite everywhere. You know, you can be rolling your eyes at this, but a uh, fantastic bird and probably well worth the three points in Holland, uh, in the Netherlands, as Vincent says. So there you go. Right. Um, I will pass on to you, Vincent, just to do the last few uh, mini leagues, if that's all yep. right. Yeah, sure. Excellent. Here we go. Ah, uh, Inland South. Well, I have no idea what could be uh, done there, but uh, 170 species 250 points by you venables is a really solid lead so he will uh, make it uh, to the gold medal probably and uh, after that we have joe woodman and glenn pesco and not a lot of highlights great northern diver inland should be good I think we get them in the Netherlands on inland sites as well sometimes uh, we have uh, like uh, inland provinces 
close to Belgium and Germany where they um, pop up every year. But even on Tesla, it's a, well, it's not, a, not an easy bird to come by. And position 17, yeah, all the way we'll down to 24. This one, shall we? <laughs> great, 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 great. So uh, the um, uh, Patches, Sean Davies, Hemwell, um, also uh, solid lead with the 241 points. A lot of quality there because he has uh, fewer species than Drew, who yeah, comes in I mean, second. The Hamwell's essentially a Spanish marsh in Somerset, isn't it, Scott? <laughs> yeah, you know, superb, superb sight. Yeah. You know, uh, breeding, breeding little, well, probably has been breeding little bitten in the past has been breeding night heron in the past has been Ooh. glossy ivis having a bash it's where yep. uh, literally uh, where cat ligret and great white egret both colonized the uk so yep. you know it's a bit different to the rest <laughs> apparently yes with the 241 points doing really well and adam bassett he is yeah it's a draw with that uh, peter sofley on uh, 189 points so that's uh, maybe they can uh, shuffle it a little bit, and then we have a lot of other sides. Uh, yeah, two, I mean, just... three, four, and five, <laughs> all the way down. Yeah, I'm not no sure highlights, what, but I'm not sure what Ben Jacklin has been doing with uh, 14 species and 14 points. I, I think he opened his curtain on his day, looked out <laughs> yes, into the garden with his hangover, yeah. then closed the curtain and went back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> for the rest of the year yeah yeah yeah, yeah. right our inland wales we are we we've seen uh, the only contender all year johnny price 80 species 84 points well yeah that's gold medal for sure really nice and the patch mark use uh breaking at 100 points nicely and uh well second sean sweeney third terry wells well done and then the islands oh look at that well <laughs> congratulations scott that's a, a big really score. big win cape may wobble in red hard to read yeah. but oh it's it's, it's there uh, with a lot of exclamation points 209 species 400 24 points really well done and well i i have been in the island league all year this year i really uh, tried uh, to uh, get myself back in the uh, low countries le uh, league so uh, i'm not uh, making it in this uh, league probably next year but second really happy with it 223 species score. and i think i made it but uh, for ne the next, next one. time, next time, <laughs> maybe I've made it to 400 points. You never know. You never know. Ha have you and found the two megas you need to catch Scott back up? Though? That's oh, the question. I'm not going to catch, yeah. Uh, yeah, you never know. Two days, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and uh, Bruce Taylor, uh, uh, nicely in uh, third with a lot of uh, crazy species and uh, the highlights from Steve with the pallet swift, nice. And uh, the Isle of Rum pictures uh, by Sean Morris were already there. So, uh, great league to be in, islands the best and then we have the patches and we have no scott reed up front so well let's see what we have here david roach from papa westray and uh returning white belt divers lapland bunting taking him to 367 points well that's uh, probably a win uncatchable david, now yeah uncatchable you never know what's uh, Bear Isle is turning up, but I'm not sure if David Barnaby is having a lot of fun of, uh, over there right now. No light uh, to bird anyway, so yeah. 180. Uh, between 11 but, and one. Yeah, but 181 species is really nice. 336 uh, points. Scott Reed, third. Congratulations. First silly waxwing thing since uh, 2019, and the Velvet Scoter is patch gold. And I'm uh, just uh, missing uh, the podium there, but uh, still happy. 199 species, but uh, I already uh, told you that I just may have reached 200. So really happy there. And John Bowler uh, on the Aleph Tari doing really good stuff with the green wing teal. And a carrion crow. How about that? Patch gold. 
<laughs> so what, what what more do we have? Uh, oh, cold tit, also nice uh, with uh, the influx of uh, continental cold tits, probably one of those. And uh, also uh, Matt Bruce on Sandwick, Kerry and Craw, the on, uh, only November edition. And all the way down. It's Yvonne. funny how those species are sort of their um, status varies island to island, sort of sort of patch gold, maybe not on up on yeah. mainland in Shetland, but definitely patch gold out in the Western Isles. So I think so, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, well done to all of those guys. Yes. And here we have some other really good participants. I think Bob Dawson, he didn't even open the curtain. He just heard <laughs> Owl Sparrow and uh, Blackbird or something like that. <laughs> yeah, Bob, I, he, he seemed really keen right at the front end of the year. Isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, I work with Bob, uh, so we, we, we share an office together. And he, um, yeah, he, uh, oh, he was, he was all for it at the start of the year. And it, uh, yeah, he, yeah. Was, he was checking his patch in January. Um, he's uh only a tiny little patch on St Mary's, but then uh, we we go to Tresco quite a bit for work. Um, so he decided yeah. he was going to have the whole of Tresco as another patch. And uh, yes. I've no, actually no idea what the two points are. Um, so he's obviously gone to the effort of of adding something, but I don't quite understand how he's gone there. How, and how has he managed two, two birds sheets. on a yeah, trip to Tresco? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but he's uh, yeah, he, he's lost oh, all well, the that. that. <laughs> oh, I do. Don't worry. There's also there's there's always uh, 2024, 20, uh, and there we have it, the Netherlands, 10 kilometer. Uh, Rob van Bemmelen, my good friend from uh, Castricum, he is uh, well, he made a big effort this year, and I'm not sure what he's been doing, but he has got uh, all the skills uh, you want for a really good local patch birder. Um, Self-found leeches, petrol, grey phalarope. He done a lot of uh, sea watching, obviously. Richard Pippet. Siberian chief, long tail duck, great stuff. Breached 400 points, and well, he's all uh, for it uh, for uh, 2024. And Arnold Meyer, he didn't update it. I'm not sure, but he I'm, I'm, uh, he he made it also like uh, 230 species. So oh. I have to. I have to. I, I. I have. I will. I will press him uh, to update it properly uh, before the end of the year. Fifth of January, everybody. Fifth of January is when we're yeah, going. Yeah, 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 We're yeah, going to yeah, close yeah. that. So everybody, get your scores and go and nudge yeah. everyone to go and yeah. get them submitted. Um, yeah. On that note, just sorry to uh, segue. Oh sure. We have changed the pin post for 2024 sign up, but in the thread from that. There is still the scores, so you can still click on that drop down and find the link to get your scores in over the next few days. So, uh, yeah, if you're a bit confused, that's where it is now. Okay. Great. So, there we have the uh, uh, local patches for the three square kilometers. And, uh, well, as you can see, Rob van Bemmelen, he uh, has a, a patch which, uh, which is not too close to his home but he made he made it uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, nice autumn uh, uh, days over there and 165 species 233 uh, points will uh, bring him the lead uh, Ben Haxiola he has been doing really well this year also and Flarding which is not really properly on the coast I think it's about 10 or 15 kilometers inland it's close cool. to Rotterdam good score Really keen birder. He's also on board for next year. And Maurice van Veen. Oh, look at the quality there. 139 species, 202 points. But he had a self-found lesser yellow legs and a blitz reed warbler on his In local November. patch. That's a cold yeah. blitz reed. No, I'm not sure. I don't think all is on uh, November. I think this, ah. these are the, the highlights for the for the whole year. But he had a singing blitz reed warbler sing somewhere in end of May or early June and the lesser yellow legs was probably in October. He, uh, well, they, they, we, he has also, a, he's uh, somewhere inland close to Rotterdam and uh, they get these uh, juvenile um, uh, red shanks there. And uh, he just was, he's a keen photographer. So he was just uh, photographing uh, uh, the red shanks and one stood out a little bit. Oh, fantastic. The rest is, and look at Jan, uh, Daniel Strautner from uh, Germany, 
also a nice score with the 168 points and hopefully he will join us uh, as uh, on the yeah, patchwork challenge and maybe also on the dutch version fantastic yep right well thank you very much vincent for that rattling through um so we're just going to finish up with the top 10 leagues so we've seen all these scores already but you know they're massive top 10 10k scott reed looks like you're going to win the overall 10k job by scott is oh, 10 points count well you never know i guess rob, rob could find a couple of bits to bridge that gap but 209 species v 234 that's an incredible quality over quantity race there isn't it so fantastic uh and vincent rounding off the top three and a healthy lead so it looks like you're safely ensconced there so very thank well you, done to you, the both you. of you um and then in the green top 10 so this is people that do not ever use a car for their patch we've got nige lound at jib point on 352 uh, we've got Trevor Gerling at Titchwell on 340. And we've got David and Scott uh, level pegging. I think it's goal difference at the moment, points per bird. That's unofficially how we're doing it. So, um, yeah, you're going to have to pull out a point or two, Scott, just to, to get that wrapped up. Um, and then the overall top 10. And I think as I touched on last uh, last month, Jacob with the new record, I mean, I think, Obviously, there's a lot of different birders in that area, but Jacob finds so much stuff. Um, you know, he's really sort of taken the mantle on from Adam Hart and become one of the big bird finders down there. Um, and 432 points is a new record. I don't think that's gone up since last month. It may go up again. We will see. But very well done to Jacob. Um, obviously, nobody's catching that up in this month so uh but it'd be interesting to see what he finishes on that new high score mark um and also well done to rob and, uh, and mark um both at spurn as well um and david the the only non-spurn person uh kind of challenging for the top three so well done uh he's had a fantastic year on papal westray some fantastic birds you know that white's flush last month and just quality all through the year so brilliant absolutely brilliant um it's been a fantastic year and i look forward to seeing the final scores next month we do have a couple of bits though so i just wanted to ask you both what were your highlights not necessarily from your patch but from other people's patches uh for 2013 uh, 20, 2013 only 10 years out for 2023 I'll, I'll go over to you first scott um obviously for, for obvious reasons i i pay a lot of attention to the islands league and the other participants in, in the islands league um just through patchwork challenge even going back to 2019 when i lasted it well, whenever yeah. it was um i built up a really good sort of online social media relationship with um uh bruce taylor and john bowler up on on barra and tyree and yeah. uh so i always make sure i pay attention to what those guys are doing and it's uh it just keeps it really interesting and uh yeah bruce's incredible run during that american over nice. what well, american land bird in, invasion and it, it just seemed utterly relentless and then and, and not only was his island getting these birds it was him that was finding most of them in, you know the what, five six red-eyed vireos in in a small area and then a philadelphia vireo pops out amongst them and um yeah just yeah i, I was, just I was a bit absolutely a couple of tennessee warblers just as a, a bit couple of tennessee, yeah <laughs> it was it was one of those where obviously you know bird in silly i was like in one sense of i was green with envy but i was also so chuffed to bits for him that he was yeah, that he was yeah. there scoring big up there so um absolutely. yeah that, that was uh, yeah, yeah that, that that little period for for bruce was my my uh highlight away from silly brilliant and what about yourself vincent any particular highlights for other people or Oh yeah, there are so many. I think Heather Cape May Warbler uh, uh, should be mentioned here as well. But yeah, I think when I, when I focus a little bit on the leagues here in the Netherlands, I, I think there's so much potential because we had a few very fanatic uh, uh, local patches joining in this year. But I think next year we, uh, I, I saw uh, already the people who. Uh, 
and joined in now for uh, like we're st somewhere around 70 now and there are such uh, sharp birders and i think especially the 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 area where uh, maurice van veen is uh, have found the lesser yellow legs and the yeah, Bly Street Warbler, there are a few uh, other birders uh, also joining in. And I think uh, on the island of Tesla, we are now on five or six patches. My son is... Uh, Competition? He, yeah, my, my son is going to beat me uh, really, really uh, bad this year. Oh, uh, next year. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's sitting next to me. He's laughing already his ass off because uh, he, he, he picked a patch uh, which is on the North uh, Sea coast. I think also on the head, like, like the same uh, latitude. And it's a really good area for uh, finding rarities. So, uh, and uh, he is, he, he's such a sharp bird. So he, he's joining in and uh, a lot of, uh, uh, he has some uh, friends who are, who are he's at 21 and uh, some of his uh, generation. They, are, they, they really have uh, some uh, potential in them and uh, they uh, picked uh, really good patches. So for uh, for next year, oh, I'm really afraid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I mean, that's that's fantastic. And no doubt we'll get Kuhn on to talk to us about all the great birds he's found and left his, how he's Probably. left his dad trailing in his dust. Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so no, that's brilliant. Uh, from a personal point of view, um, in terms of highlights for 2023, it's been fantastic bringing this back. I think personally, just um, 2016 was the last year that I ran this and then we sort of segued onto the website. Um, that didn't work quite as we'd hoped because it kind of, it, it, it sort of pulled down the communication and we've made this, in the year that Twitter's falling apart, We've gone back to Twitter, <laughs> but it seems to work really well and really enjoyed these monthly catch ups just to chat to a few of you guys that are taking part to build up a bit of a community, bird finding and patching community across the UK. And it's been really inspirational. And I, I always say Sean Morris on um, the Isle of Rum is always one that I look out for. He doesn't score big. But he gets some ridiculous birds year after year after year. And his oven bird. It just sort of pootling around that bit of grotty grass is just one of the it's incongruous finds of the year. So very well done to him. I think yeah. that probably is mine because I cannot say Ryan's run of seabirds in the summer because it's Ryan. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, that was fantastic. In terms of the first bonus points of 2024, what do you think it's going to, boys? <sighs> I'm going to just... What I hope would be a uh, rare uh, sea duck because we are short of uh, Stellar's either. Uh, we're still awaiting one of the yeah, rare one of, one of the rare white winged uh, uh, scooters would be really massive. Would be both would be first for the Netherlands. So I think uh, for January, one of those would be really good. So any 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 uh, of the three, Stellos either or um, uh, yeah, one of the good one of the one of the uh, one of the white types. wings. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Fantastic. And what about you, Scott? What do you think we're going to get in the UK? Um, it's always, it's always tempting to say northern stuff, isn't it? You know, your ivory gulls, your Ross's gulls. But I think with the um, the westerly autumn that we had, um, there's got to be. Uh, a yank lingering somewhere, much like the the, the myrtle warbler in the northeast ten years ago, whenever it was, yeah, yeah. it was found on a um, RSPB big garden bird watch day, or uh, yeah, there's or, or even a just a really good yank wader um, on somebody's patch. So I think there's yeah, I think something something from the west, so uh, will a, bit it. Of, a bit of leftover westness. A bit of yeah. leftover westness. I don't know. I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, American robins maybe the the obvious one popping up somewhere. But yeah, uh, I think we've we've already we just had one of those, haven't we, in the Highlands somewhere? Was um, that was somebody's patch, was it? Was that a? I don't know. know. I don't think I don't think it was on one of the patches, but obviously that one of those has just popped up, and it's kind of pretty expected. Fair, I guess, in a kind of way. It's it's. It's those American warblers that really fire up the imagination, you know, from the golden crown warbler uh, back in 89, the yellow throat um, in Herefordshire about 15, 20 years ago. Um, you know, and like you say, the myrtle warbler up in County Durham, <laughs> which is just insane. So 
yeah, I think something like that would be fab. Uh, just an inland, an inland yank, something, something to give the inland patches, something to get at. But uh, we'll wait and see. Right. Well, thank you very much to both of you for your contributions today. Thank you for all your efforts in Patchwork Challenge this year, and uh, best of luck for 2024 as well. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, and uh, well, have a good one. Nice uh, uh, to be here. See you I, around. Yeah. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy you New too. Year. Thanks a lot, James. Cheers, Vincent. Bye-bye.